Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about sharpening in Lightroom. I have covered it before, but I'm just going to update it a little bit. Now sharpening hasn't changed over many versions of Lightroom. It's all about luminosity and that's the same for any tool in Photoshop as well. I would say sharpening in Adobe Camera Raw via Lightroom is actually more subtle than using Smart Sharpen or Unsharp Mask. You have far more ability to actually ruin your image in Photoshop. Whereas Lightroom, it's a little bit less aggressive in its sharpening if you do it properly. The only little problem is on export, you've got three choices, low, standard or high, glossy or matte paper or screen. Now that has never been a problem for me. I've gone out to high-end printers, spent quite a bit of money going with standard and let's say glossy paper and the print has come back absolutely fine. So I rarely go into Photoshop to sharpen. I am going to go into Photoshop at first because Smart Sharpen is a great place to show you the relationship between luminosity and sharpening. Let's get going. Well, here we are inside of Photoshop. So it's filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. Now this is a good way of demonstrating what sharpening is all about. Now sharpening is about finding edges in your document or picture, then accentuating those edges by increasing the contrast and then deciding how wide you want that border to be. So with a mount on 206 and radius at 1.6, we're not seeing a lot. So up to 500, up to 64 pixels, command zero to fit back on screen. Now that's the luminance border, obviously at a ridiculously overinflated 64 pixels. But notice here where there wasn't a great deal of difference, i.e. not much of an edge, we don't get much sharpening. So that's really what sharpening is all about. A mount is like a volume control. I look upon it as more of a contrast knob. So you're turning up the contrast, then you're deciding how wide you want that edge to be. You find the edge, you turn up the contrast, and then you decide on the width of the contrast. So with radius, you're encroaching into neighboring pixels, basically, and that is sharpening. Simple as that. Obviously, very much exaggerated, but filter, camera raw filter, inside of Photoshop, obviously, sharpening, amount up to 150, radius up to three, detail up to 100, masking up to, uh, masking actually down on zero. We don't want any masking. Just to show you what's going on. You can see there's little sharpening taking place there, but basically we've only got three pixels. It's not gonna look like the Smart Sharpen 64 pixels, but we have got noise. And this wasn't a photograph. I created it in Photoshop with a couple of gradients. It's created noise in this image. So the luminance slider will probably get rid of a lot of it. So it has. And that's the problem with sharpening. It finds your luminance noise as well and also accentuates it. It turns it up, turns the volume up of your luminance noise. So there's always a trade-off between the both. Let's go to Lightroom and look at a real world image. F8. I'm just going to double click on sharpening to set it all back to default and double click on noise reduction to bring that all back to default. F7, I'm going to check on my zoom levels. I'm on fit and one to one. I want to be on two to one. So now spacebar fit and two to one or Z or Z, I'm going in and out. Also, you can right click here. I've got it on two to one. You can have one-to-one, -one. I prefer two-to-one. -one. You can click here, go onto a certain area and click on it. I'm gonna use the top of that gate there. You can click in and click out and roughly go to an area as well and move it around. So one more time with that crosshair, I want it roughly around there. So I'm on two-to-one there. Right, what slider should you move first? Well, you should be moving the radius slider first. Now I used to work like this. Put the masking up and decide what areas I wanted sharpening and then just move the sliders ad hoc. I've read a book by a guy called Bruce Fraser called Real World Sharpening. Unfortunately, Bruce is no longer with us, but he helped develop the sharpening tools in Photoshop and Lightroom. And he basically explained it very well. And now I understand it. 
I understand his workflow, but I, I probably got the same result, but it, it was a bit haphazard. Now I have some reasoning behind my workflow. So let's get going. Alt or Option key pressed, you'll see reset sharpening, take no notice of that, because this will allow us to see the grayscale version of our image as we move the sliders. So radius first, notice it's on 25, 1, 25 and 0, and colors on 25, 50 and 50. Color noise is very rare, there's no harm keeping on that. I actually believe I've got some color noise in this image, so I will show it to you. But there's no harm in keeping on that. It very rarely gets touched by anyone because color noise is quite rare these days. Alter option key press radius. Now, I'm not zoomed in to where I want to be zoomed. I, you know, I can see that edge there, but I like to be zoomed in at two to one. One to one is the absolute minimum when you're sharpening. So Z or Z on my keyboard to get to that area there. Alter option key pressed, radius going now. Now you can see that border there, the luminous border. There's nothing wrong with that, but I don't want halos. Halos are luminous borders around whole pixels that makes an image look very crunchy. In other words, you've over sharpened it. Around 1.6, now if I go right up to three, you can see a very exaggerated view and I'm getting a bit of noise as well. So around 1.6 is absolutely fine. What slider should I move next? The detail slider. Now the detail slider works like this. Below 50, it works as a halo suppressant. We don't want halos. Above 50, it can even create halos, but it sharpens up high frequency detail. And high frequency would be the inside of that wood, the grain. Low frequency is the edge there. So that's high frequency. High frequency detail is very fine detail. So the detail slider above 50 will sharpen that up. It can produce a lot of noise. You can see quite a bit of noise in that image already. So I'm very careful about what I do with the detail slider. It's on 25 by default. That will give you an idea why you need it to be on 25 because at zero, you're really turning off the sharpening. You do need to have some detail on. I used to think differently. I eat my hat now since I read that book by Bruce Fraser. So I'm looking now and I'm taking it up to 100. I will see a lot of noise. So I'm going to start bringing it down from 100 at a reasonable pace until I start to see the noise disappear and I'm not losing my luminous border because I need that border on to make it look sharp. So ironically, around 25 seems pretty okay. Some people don't like the detail slider, and I'm one of them because it can introduce a lot of noise into your image and ruin stuff. It depends on the photograph totally when you should use it to its full extent. If you've got a, an image with you know a lot of high frequency detail, well then use it, but then keep the radius low. The radius slider dictates how the detail sliders will look and the masking slider, so be aware of that. Alter option key pressed. What one next? Well, basically, it's going to be the amount slider. Now, this will just give you a grayscale view of your image as you would see it normally, but obviously, you know, you are increasing the amount as you go across. And I'm looking for noise, and around even at 40, 59, I'm starting to see noise at around 60, quite pronounced noise. So I'm going to stay around there because I've got the luminance slider to play with. Now, masking works like this. It decides what areas you want sharpened or don't want sharpened. As you move it to the right with the Alter Option key pressed, the whiter it is, the more likely it is to be sharpened. The darker it is, the less likely it is to be sharpened. But I like to be in Fit view, so Z or Z on my keyboard to get to that. And now, with the Alter Option key pressed, I'm going to go back and see that grayscale view when it catches up. Now, I'm probably going to stop around 70. Now normally I go to 80 or 90, but I'm just going to stop around 70 on this one. So I'm sharpening a lot of the grass and the sky as well. I don't want the clouds too sharp, but they did have edges, so they will be sharpened to a certain extent. I'm going to stop there. Again, I'm going to zoom back in. Now I said to you that there's some color noise in this image. How do I know? If I turn that slider back down to zero there, color noise slider, 
There's the colour noise. You can see it is mottly colour. It looks different to luminous noise. You're going to have to recognise the difference. So having that colour slider on did no harm. Now I don't need to press the alter option key because it's not about luminosity. This is about colour. So I'm going to move it up and probably put the smoothness up a bit. This is about, you know, with smoothness, large blocks of colour noise. And detail is about the stuff in, you know, the colour noise in the finer details. I don't think there's much in the details. Uh, to be honest with you, I hardly ever move these sliders in my Lightroom life. So I don't know why suddenly I've got colour noise in this image. It's just purely by chance I spotted it because I don't normally look for it. So detail at 25. I think I'm going to stay with that. So having it on its defaults doesn't do any harm, to be totally honest with you. Now I can see luminous noise so alter option key pressed I'm going to bring it up I'm glad I saw that color noise because I very rarely see it right just bring it up I'm starting to get rid of it there also I'm taking away from the sharpening it mainly affects the detail area so I'm going to keep that detail area around 60 and the contrast up a little bit I might even risk bringing my radius up slightly and bringing this the sharpening up because I got rid of some of the luminous noise I'm pushing my sharpening a little bit more I'm going to stop at that let go let it catch up I'm going to mouse it up a little bit I'm going to turn it on and off so off now you'll probably have to play catch up look at that it's a lot of color noise luminous noise very ill-defined with it back on that look, doesn't look too bad. Don't forget, I'm zoomed in at 2 to 1. At 1 to 1, that won't look that bad. I'm quite pleased with that. Z or Z in my keyboard. F7 to close the left-hand side panel. So that's fit on screen. I'm really happy with that. Now, I saw that colour noise by chance. As I said, having on its defaults, I think it's 50, 25 and 25, whatever, will do no harm if you've got no colour noise. But it happened to get rid of it for me, so just leave it where it is most of the time. You probably won't see colour noise, I think, because I shot into the sun. I got a bit, really, So, and, and I was shooting with a very wide-angled lens. So anyway, let's go to export this image and use the sharpening on export. So Command and Control Shift E, or Shift Command and Control E, either way around, we'll still do it. This is for the export dialog box. Sharpen for screen standard. I've got it on sRGB, quality of 80 for the JPEG quality, long edge 2048. I'm going to accept that. And honestly, I've gone out to print on it. High end printers at matte and standard have been absolutely fine. You do need to over sharpen for print, but that's another video. So I'm just going to export this now and look at it in my preview app, which is my Windows type photo viewer on a Mac. And I'll look at it and show you that uh, how it would look at JPEG 80 quality and the standard sharpening on export. There it is. Command O to open up my preview app. Let's get rid of that side menu. It keeps popping up. And then I'll just turn it off again. Off it will go. Now I'm going to go to view actual size. And there it is, the actual size of my screen. My screen roughly at the moment, I think, is roughly around the resolution. is 2048. So it's filling up the whole screen. So look at that. JPEG quality 80 with the sharpening. If I go back to the original image, get rid of the right-hand panel there. That's it on my screen there. And that's it there. You can't even spot much difference. So 80 quality. Standard sharpen for screen. It looks absolutely fine. I hope you got something from this, guys. A sharpening is really straightforward when you look at it in just in terms of luminosity. I know that radius thing and the detail thing in Adobe Camera Raw can be confusing. So do your radius first, then detail will suppress halos below 50, but you don't often see many halos. So really play with that detail slider carefully. If you go above 50, it introduces a lot of noise. I know it sounds confusing, this halo suppressant thing, but it does work like that. And masking, of course, mask out areas you don't want to be sharpened. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.